and ask questions about the book. Brian, great to have you here. I'm taking over. Thank you. Congratulations on launch day. Thank you. Uh, when you first told me you were writing a novel about the world of morning experience in this business and all of the sort of we face and the challenges that we face every day is melded in there. It feels a lot like it's about the 2016 election. So when did you start writing? Well, I would have been a miracle worker if I had written this during the, the 2016 presidential campaign because <laughs> A, we were a little busy, and B, I don't think books can come out that fast, but uh, I wrote it during a presidential campaign, which was the 2012 presidential campaign. That long ago. I still lived through 2016. That was also a crazy presidential mm. race, and it was filled with lots of colorful characters, and frankly, I was struggling during part of that time because there were so many ethical issues, um, particularly when my boss at the time had one version of how he wanted things depicted. And mm -hmm. so I started writing things down to try to kind of process. I think when people seen it was coming. So as I was writing it, even in 2014, I was making a pretty safe bet that there would be a female presidential candidate right, and that right. there would be some sort of larger than life male candidate, Donald Trump was already threatening to run. So I can't say that those didn't end up coloring some of it, but I handed this book in. I sold this book, I should say, at the beginning of 2015, huh. and Donald Trump didn't get into the race until June of 2015. Your character's name? Gallo is very idealistic, um, and I like to think on my best days, I am too. Um, she's really trying to do the right thing. I think she figures things out faster than I did to tell you the truth. But look, it's not list. It's about the story of a woman in the workplace and trying to figure out what the line is for her, what, what, when enough is enough, what she's willing to sacrifice for success. I think that all of us, you know, can relate to that on some level. And it's all in this morning show environment, which is so strange. Everyone wakes up at three in the morning. It's such a, it's such a weird, unique environment, this morning TV thing. What, what, what were you trying to tell readers? Happens behind the scenes, you know, all of the relationships that we all have and all of the decisions that are being made in real time and the breathless quality to our job. And I've tried to capture that for the viewers because often I've thought if there were a camera just trained on us, you know, <laughs> during commercial breaks and everything that the um, audience would be fascinated. And there's a really handsome Rob Lar in the book. <laughs> um, Rob Lar, the character, is based on some co-workers that I have had. Um, a combination of a co several. A composite okay. of several. Um, he's not based on Chris Cuomo. <laughs> However, I did steal some of Chris Cuomo's best lines. Chris, as you know, is very funny. And so I stole some of Chris's best lines with permission okay. from Chris. We saw like you're trying to top what actually happened last year. Well, I couldn't uh, if I tried, <laughs> but I do think, I mean, uh, something funny happened while writing this book, and that is that things that I had already written did come to pass. Such as? The talk of illegal voting, okay? That illegal voting had somehow changed the outcome of the election. And by the way, that's what Donald Trump right. also came to say. And, but I wrote it years before that because, <laughs> let, you know, I mean, the truth is I'd like to pretend that I'm psychic, but apparently there are some perennial favorites. I had in here years ago written that Giselle Bündchen comes on the show and does yoga. I didn't know that Giselle Bündchen actually does do yoga and has a... Lies about journalism. Well, you'll have to read it to There's find out with both sides. And she realizes that she does have some biases. She does have some preconceived notions. And she does need an awakening for how to be a truly fair journalist. Amanda wakes up.